everyone calm down, take a seat. Everyone here has done an exceptional and an incredible job so far. And I am extremely proud of every single one of you. Except for one. Oh, someone's in trouble. Carl. Yes? Do you want to be here, son? Yes, sir, Mr. Seahorse. Don't call me that. Don't call you what, Mr. Seahorse? Mr. Seahorse. No, I'm Carl. Don't call me Mr. Seahorse. Oh, sorry, Mr. Sergeant Seahorse. Now listen here, Carl. You have one last day to prove to me that you belong here. Now can you prove it? That you have what it takes to be an SEA agent and be a part of Mission Deep Blue. Absolutely, Seahorse man. Good. Watch out for that jellyfish. <laughs> what jellyfish? How are you feeling, Carl? I mean, not bad. I just don't know if I'm made out for this. Seahorse told me that today is my last day that I can prove to be a CEA agent. And how can I prove it to him in just one day? Carl, I think you just do your best and leave it at that. Just do my best? Yeah, I mean, what else can you do? It's either do your best or give up. And Carl, you're not the type of guy to give up. <sighs> Thanks. No problem. Let's go. OK. I'm OK. Friends, can you believe today is the last day of kids camp? Man, that is super hard to believe. I feel like I've learned so much about God and myself and becoming an SEA agent. I know. And do you know what the best part of today is going to be? What's that? We get to have all of you join us here at the church for lunch and our graduation ceremony as we become official SEA agents. <whistles> hey you! Who said anything about uh, a graduation? As far as I'm concerned, the official meter is not full, and that means that there's no graduates yet. You, there's still more to be done. Okay, uh, so what do we have to do to earn our final fish points? Well, I've got one final, super difficult task for you. Uh, wh what is it? Well, this super crazy, almost impossible, really difficult, super tough, hard to do task is undersea soccer. What in the world is that? Well, I'm glad you asked. So the way that underwater sports work is not the way that they work above ground. So in undersea soccer, the way that it works is you do not kick the balls, the balls kick you. Let us demonstrate. Yeah. See, I'm an expert, so don't expect to get it. The milk. Well, that one obviously doesn't count, uh, but you you get the point. Do you guys want to try it? Yeah. yeah. All right. Are you guys ready? I think so. Yeah. All right, let's do this. Yeah. Huh. Huh. All right, well, it looks like you guys need some more practice, so I'll leave you to it. I'm gonna head out. I mean, yeah, but before you go, can we maybe do one more silly song? I mean, I can't say no to a silly song, so we can do another silly song. Okay, today we've got maybe the greatest kids camp song ever. It's called Little Cabin in the Woods. Oh yeah, that's right. We're singing Little Cabin in the Woods. Are you ready? So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna do some motions. We're gonna sing, a, sing the song. 
Just follow after me as best as you can, all right? They're going to do the same. Here we go. Let's do regular style first. Little cabin in the woods. Little man by the window stood. Saw a rabbit hopping by, knocking at his door. Help me, help me, help me, said, before the hunter shoots me dead. Little rabbit, come inside, safely to a buy. All right, so that was regular style. Now we're going to go really tiny and do tiny style. Okay, little cabins up, everybody. Little cabin in the woods, little man by the window stood. Saw a rabbit hopping by, knocking at his door. Help me, help me, help me, said, before the hunter shoots me dead. Little rabbit, come inside, safely to a bye. Woo! And there's our tiny style. Now we're ready for big style. Big cabin's up! Little cabin in the woods, little man by the window stood. Saw a rabbit hopping by, knocking at his door. Help me, help me, help me, said, before the hunter shoots me dead. Little rabbit, come inside, safely to a bye. Woo! And that's Little Cabin in the Woods. It's a good one. I know. Woo! So now it's time to transition over to worship time. Let's go. All right, it's time to worship. We're done with silly songs, and now we're gonna take all that energy and put it right into worshiping God and praising Him for all the incredible things that He does in our life. And we're gonna have fun with it. All right, here we go. Dreams come alive, life is for living with you. I've made my decision. Hey. You lift me up, fill my eyes with wonder. For every young in your love, this freedom's untainted. With you, no moment is wasted. Do we know what to do? Let's go! See the sun now bursting through the clouds like a
Agents, you have done an incredible job. And Dr. Enmemdibib and I have conferred, and we think you are ready to graduate and become full-fledged SEA agents. Great job, we could not be any prouder. Your field reports were spot on and you demonstrated the kind of teamwork that we were hoping for. But the most important thing was that how you dove in deep when we made out for our observations. I love to see young agents spending time in the ocean and getting to know God's wor world as well. Well done. I, yes, I couldn't agree more with Dr. A about all this, about everything she said. Uh, I think you guys are very much ready and your training has shown that you can handle tough situations and you can get through them. So remember, as long as you are using your training, you can get through anything that life brings. There's just one thing left to do. You must share what you've learned with people you meet and tell them about all the things you've seen. Agents, are you ready to share your story and give your mission debrief? Yes, senior agent. I am so ready. Um, I think I'm ready. But quick question, what's a mission debrief? Well, that is a great question, Agent Dubsy. So a mission debrief is where you draw from the things that you learned and the lessons that you got from everything that we did, and you tell that story to another person. Oh, so it's just telling another story. I actually learned that from Whimsy, and I wrote mine down here because, well, my brain just really isn't quite there yet, but I wrote it all down. <sighs> I knew I wanted to be a hero and become a deep sea agent, but I didn't realize that I would learn how to work with someone else so that we could both be heroes. Also, I learned to ask questions and learned one second, <clears throat> about the world around me. I really loved learning about spending time with each other and how we must trust the people next to us just like we trust God. I also discovered that I can use my gifts to help my team. Who knew jumping and seeing good would be so valuable? Um, also, I learned, um, well, seaweed gives me gas. <laughs> well, we all learned that one, which is dumb seaweed. I also learned that from Agent W, it's good to write things down, but let me tell you that it's one thing to look at the ocean from above it, but it's an entirely different thing to be underneath the ocean and looking at it from underneath the surface. I think I could spend 20 years under here and still not understand everything about it, but I do know that God made it, God filled it with beautiful fish and a bunch of other beautiful stuff. I never realized just spending time in here will just make me in such awe of God's creation. It could make my faith grow deeper. Mm. I also learned that God has given me a story and I now have a chance to share that story with other people. If we do, our faith grows deeper, like even deeper than the seaweed burger alley. Do not eat the seaweed burgers. Ah, I love being an SEA agent. Well, I don't think it gets much clearer than that, Senior Agent Blue. I think our junior agents are ready to go. Uh, mm -hmm. Can I ask a question? Sure, Agent Dubsy. Um, do you promise you won't get mad? Um, okay. Okay, so when we were in the ocean, I found a great white shark, and um, I thought it'd be a pretty cool pet. You didn't. Please say you're joking. But it seems really nice. No, absolutely not. Okay, you're right, my bad. Um, so should I um, get it off the submarine? Dr. Anemone, huh, hey, huh, I got it right. Well, Dr. Anemone, will you go and... I, I'm on it, Senior Agent Blue. Okay. Well, Junior Agents, it's been an incredible ride, and I just have an, a huge amount of pride uh, in your skills and abilities, and I think that you just deserve a big old round of applause. Why don't we give them a big old round of applause for their efforts? Well done. You are going to be fine additions to the Sea Exploration Agency. <laughs> Well, Agent Whimsy, Agent Dubsy, 
Your first mission as SEA agents is going to be to go and save Dr. And then Anyway, uh, she needs saving, so. You just had to bring a shark, Dubsy. That's Agent Dubsy to you. What is up, Kids Camp, my fellow SEA agents? Once again, I am Special Agent Kurt Early. Hopefully you're calling me that once again because my entire confidence relies upon it because I love the nickname, okay? So please call me Curly. I think it's awesome. Um, but once again, my name is Evan. And let me tell you a little bit uh, of something about me. Now, I love to talk, okay? My friends would probably tell you that, hey, Evan, sometimes he won't be quiet, okay? I'm pretty hyper. Raise your hand right now if you have ever been told that you're hyper. Okay, if I could throw my both hands up, I would, okay? Um, I am kind of a hyper guy, all right? I like to talk, I like to have friends, I like to make friends, I love to talk about fun things, serious things, funny things, food things, anything, I like to talk about it. But even though I love to talk, there have been times in my life where my fear and my nerves have kept me from talking about the one thing that I find most valuable, and that's my relationship with God. So remember those two things that we learned, okay? First, we learned that even my little things that I have in life, like my friendship and my ability to talk to people and um, my confidence, all those things, even those little things, God wants to use them to bless others, okay? And then the second thing, we learned that my faith grows deeper when I spend time with God, okay? so. I'm close to the Lord, and like I said, even though I love to talk so much, I kind of forgot those things, and I let fear keep me from telling other people about how great God was. I can think of a specific time when I was in fourth grade. Okay, I was in fourth grade, and um, I was talking to a friend, and this friend and I, we loved to, to hang out together. We lived in the same neighborhood. We went to the same school, and now this friend and I, I remember one specific time at recess and we were having a conversation and he was asking me hey what are you up to this weekend and I said oh I'm probably going to church with my parents and um, I remember him asking like oh what's church and do you like it and just a simple question right he's not asking me a really deep or scary question but I was so nervous to talk about my faith that I ended up not even answering the question and changing the subject. I actually missed an opportunity, even in that small way, to share what a great God there is that loves him. That's, that's the opportunity that I missed. Have you ever been nervous or scared to talk about your faith? Because like I said, I know that I have. And there are many people in the Bible that have gone through that same struggle too. You're not alone in that. There are times where we let our fear keep us from telling others about the amazing God of the universe that loves us, cares about us, and died for us so that we could be with him. And there's one particular guy that's pretty famous. His name was Jonah. Now, Jonah lived uh, a long time ago, but he was a real guy. That's important. He was a real person, and this is a real story. And now Jonah, one thing that's amazing about Jonah is that he had... Uh, an amazing encounter with God. God came to him and said, Jonah, I want you to go far away to this place called Nineveh, and I want you to share the amazing work that I have done in you and share the amazing work that I want to do through them, right? What an amazing message. Imagine going and telling somebody random, hey, guess what? You have an all paid for trip to Disneyland, right? That'd be some awesome news to deliver. This news is 20 times as great. Jonah gets the opportunity to go tell people for the first time that there's a God who loves them and wants to save them. How cool. But Jonah did not want to go. Not only was he afraid to go, but he actually genuinely did not think it was good to go, and he was not happy about it. The God of the universe came to him and said, go, and he said, no. I don't know about you, but saying no to God like that, I don't think it's going to turn out that well. And it didn't. So Jonah decides to run. He says, you know what, God? I know you're telling me to go that way, but guess what? I'm going to do me. I'm going that way. Remember how we talked about sin isn't always just bad decisions that we make. Sometimes it reveals itself in the things that we want. So God wants us to go this way, but we want to go that way. So Jonah decides, you know what? See you, Nineveh. 
I'm going to the farthest possible place away from you. And on his way, God in his great mercy and humor says, you know what, Jonah? You're not going to do that. I'm going to send a fish to catch you out of the sea. And Jonah falls into the water in a great storm, and he is swallowed up by a fish. I know, it is a crazy story. And I think God is doing that for a very specific reason. He is humbling Jonah. What a humbling moment. Jonah decided to say no to the God of the universe who loves him and loves people. He ran away and God has now swallowed him up in a fish and that fish is taking him right back to Nineveh. And you know what? Jonah in that moment had two options. He could just still be angry and bitter because he got caught. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I make mistakes and I get caught, sometimes I get embarrassed and I get frustrated and I get sad and I try to defend myself. Or he could do the second option and humble himself, and it's this word we use called repent. He could say, I'm sorry. He could say, I'm sorry, and he can make things right with God. So we have that same opportunity as well. We can either run away from God, or we can say, Lord, I'm sorry, and I want to be with you. Jonah says, it's it's amazing, uh, once again, it's an amazing story from the Bible. Jonah says, right here, he says, Oh, Lord, this is when he's in the middle of the fish. He says, Lord, he says, those who cling to worthless idols forfeit the grace that could be theirs. But I, with a song of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed I will make good. Salvation comes from the Lord. Basically what he's saying, he's like, Lord, I know I didn't want to go to Nineveh, but now I recognize that I'm going to put my faith in you. Because salvation comes from you. Jonah recognizes while he's in the middle of a fish, the lowest of lows, he recognizes who is truly good, and that is God. And do you know what happens? He eventually goes to Nineveh. And once again, that fear creeps back into him. That anger creeps back into him. And he even does the bare minimum when he's talking to Nineveh. He does the bare minimum sharing. And you know what? God still does an amazing work in it. And what that tells us is when you have an opportunity to share your faith to your friends, you don't have to deliver this amazing speech. You don't have to write an essay. You don't have to give this amazingly profound book. You can just say the simple things that God loves them and wants to be with them. And God will do an amazing work with it. And that brings us to our final point from camp is that our faith grows deeper when we share it with others. You are not made to keep your faith to yourself. You guys have the golden ticket. You have this incredible story to share. God has done a work in your life. And so you have an opportunity to share that with every one of your friends at school. And if that seems scary, remember the first talk that we gave that says, hey, even when it's scary, God wants to do something with the gifts that we have. Guys, thanks so much for listening with us. I hope you guys know how much God loves you, how much we love you and care for you. If you guys have ever questions, ask your parents. Come talk to us at church. We want to be with you because once again, our faith was made to be with others. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Wow, that story was really cool. I love how God can use our stories to help change other people's lives. Yeah, it makes me want to go out and tell my friends about the impact Jesus has had in my life. Trainees, report for duty. At ease. Okay, well I'm back, and I'm going to deliver some points for the fisho meter. So, I've got 30 kajamillion points to award for those who completed their craft in the box. And then I've got 30 kajamillion more to deliver for those who completed their activities. Woo! Thing's almost full. So now, we're gonna go and, tr- and see how your skills match up now for undersea soccer. Great, let's do it. All right, let's do it. You guys ready? Oh yeah. Let's see what you got. Boy, oh boy, you guys really have it down. That was impressive. And look at that, the fish meter is almost full. Wait, Senior Agent Charlie Blue, I just had an idea. Okay. This might be crazy, but what if we did the underwater sea boogie, the underwater sea dance, 
and played underwater sea soccer all at the same time. Do you think that would give us some extra points? I mean, I don't even know if that's possible, but if we could pull it off, we will definitely get some points for it. Let's see if we can. All right. Here we go. C, 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 bloop, 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 C, C, C. The fish is full, look. Yeah. Yay, we did it. Wow, you guys have just officially become a SEA agents. I feel like I could do anything now. Wait, wait. What about our last craft? Don't we still have to do that? Indeed you do. However, the craft and activity for today is going to be your first mission Ooh. as an official SEA agent. <gasps> wow, I can't wait to complete my first mission as an agent. Man, this has been so much fun. And you know what the best part is? What? That we get to see all of you today at our graduation ceremony lunch. Can't wait to see you. Don't forget to complete your first mission. We'll see you there. Bye. 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 <laughs>